Stars by Chris Thomas. Gas and dust collect and condense into cloud nebulas in space. Some sort of massive event has to occur to trigger the formation of a protostar and a protoplanetary disk. This is usually the passing of another star or planet or other object with large gravity that can start the process of making a protostar. In order to make fusion, you need four things. High mass, high density, high pressure, and high temperature. From here, a star has three options. What kind of star it will form into depends on their density and what elements that they fuse with during fusion. Low mass stars fuse with the element helium. An example of a low mass star would be a red dwarf. Medium mass stars, such as our own sun, fuse with oxygen. Examples of these are yellow dwarfs and red giants. Lastly, high mass stars fuse through iron. Examples of high mass stars would be the hypergiants and blue supergiants. When blue supergiant supernova, the core compacts and turns into a white dwarf, and then into a neutron star. Afterwards, the neutron star collapses and turns into a black hole. Black holes are the cold remnants of former stars, so dense that no matter, not even light, is able to escape their powerful gravitational pull. They are the remnants of stars where fusion no longer occurs after a huge supernova. When a yellow dwarf decides to supernova, the core compacts and again forms a white dwarf. However, from this point, instead of forming a neutron star and a black hole, it forms an invisible space mass called a black dwarf. Now back to those red dwarf stars we discussed earlier. Do they supernova and turn into black holes or even black dwarfs, white dwarfs? No. As far as we know, red dwarfs are mortal and we have never seen one uh, supernova. There are more than 100 million stars alone in the Milky Way. One person cannot begin to fathom how many stars there are in space or how many different types of stars there are. It is a truly mind-boggling topic.